What's good, everybody? Today, I'm gonna to take you with me on a journey to be creative. So do you ever just wake up and you're like, today I want to be creative. Today I want to do something. I want to put my mind to something and then complete it. There's just something so good about completing a task, right? Getting that checklist and just checking those boxes right off. Well, today I woke up feeling that way. I was like, you know what? I need to be creative today. To be honest, most things on my list today were pretty boring. Get up clean the house, do the dishes, take out the trash, things like that. But the very bottom thing on that list was to do an impromptu shoot. So I don't know what it was gonna be. I was gonna sit down and bang out some ideas on what it was that I wanted to do today, um, photography wise, to be creative. So what I've actually come up with is going to be a little product photography shoot. Now I'm not sure what it's going to be of, what the style is going to be. Uh, I've just decided I'm going to go to the antique store. I'm going to look around, see if I can find some things that inspire me, pick them up, and then take you guys along the way with me and just kind of show you. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. All right, guys, we got everything loaded up in the truck. So I'm about to get in and head to the store. We got a special guest with us today for today's video. That's going to be my daughter, whopping eight months old and loves to antique. So what are the odds, right? So we'll see you there. So we're out on the way to the antique shop. Something just told me to call. Pro tip, make sure you do that because they might be closed. But I called the people, they do close in 20 minutes, but they were so kind and they said to come on, it was no big deal, um, that they'd be happy to, to let me look around and all that. So I'm super thankful for that. To try to be extra courteous of their time, I'm going to leave the camera in the truck so that I'm not, you know, trying to, to fumble with it and Nora and, you know, shopping and all that. So I'll, uh, I'll probably just uh, grab everything and then when we get back to the office, we'll do like a little haul and I'll show you what I got. What's good everybody? We are back in the office now and we're going to go over all this wonderful stuff that I found today in the antique store. So first, what I'm gonna be shooting today is this watch. So this watch here is actually super cheap that I did not get at the antique store today. It's a watch I've had. Anyway, so that's what we're gonna be shooting today. Might do some of my ring too. This is from Clocks and Colors. Love their stuff. First item that I actually got from the antique store is this razor. So it was walking by, it was in a case. It's kind of a like a dirty bronze kind of still, but I don't know, it's a kind of a darker material, but it's gonna match the whole vibe we got going on here. And I am super excited about this find. Next thing I got is this pocket watch. Now I love watches. If anybody knows me um, very well, they would probably tell you that I have a problem and obsession with watches, which is okay, that's fine. The first step is admitting there's a problem. I'm not going to go any further with the steps because I, I enjoy the problem. But uh, this actually is one of my collection. I have an individual watch box that my friend Austin bought me. Um, and all of my, my pieces stay in there. I don't have a Rolex yet, but that is, that's the dream. It's when I make it, when I make it, I'll, I'll buy myself a Rolex. If you see a Rolex on my wrist, you'll know I've made it. <laughs> it's another $10 watch. So this one... Um, had some really cool engravings on it. Um, I don't know if you can see it right there. Yeah, is broken, which is fine. I didn't need it to work. I bought it knowing it was broken. So you can kind of see that there's no hands <laughs> on the actual dial, um, which is cool. That's fine. It kind of goes with that old rustic broken feel that, that I'm going for. So that's all cool and good. And then the back opens up as well. You'd keep like a, a photo, you know, back in the day or whatever. But super cool find. I like watches, so that was cool. Third thing I bought is a good old fashioned mason jar. Then I got this guy. Now this guy is a beast. 
So, you know, when I got it, I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get this hatchet. You know, I don't even know if a hatchet is the right term for this thing because this thing has got some weight to it. Like, anyway, so yeah, super cool. Um, I have no idea, it's got a little W here. So that's from, or is that an M? Huh? Perspective. No, it's definitely an M. That's from the blacksmith who made it or bladesmith. So that, that's pretty cool. Paid like nine bucks for that thing. The most expensive thing I bought is what all of this has been sitting in and it's gonna house the actual, um, all the actual materials that we're using for the product photography video. And that is this box here. So this is an Atlas Powder Company Dynamite box. So cool, right? I'm super excited about this because it's got dirt in it. It's dirty, it's grimy, it's, it's got all that texture that I need. Um, plus, it's a dynamite box. Like, how cool is that, right? But, uh, yeah, so we're gonna set everything that I got today inside of the box and then use the box itself as um, <clears throat> kind of background for the photo. The key to product photography that I have found just you know through some trial and error and watching a ton of Peter McKinnon YouTube videos is just you know playing around with everything. Take everything, you know, kind of set it up, see if you like it. If you don't, move it. If you do, get a couple shots of it, move on. Um, don't just settle for one or two shots, you know. Take a bunch of different shots, set everything up multiple ways because you never know when you're like, ah, that, that might look good get back and post and it's an absolute banger. All right, so this is the first one that we did. So here we started with the watch and I laid the razor over the top of the watch band and kind of worked in the, the pocket watch at the corner. And it was after taking this photo that I realized that the pocket watch itself was a far more interesting subject. Even though it wasn't a functional watch, it fit the scene better, and it just tied the whole mood together a whole lot better. You know, here this isn't a bad photo, but to me it just seemed very mediocre. And as soon as I switch to this new watch, you'll see with these next photos, immediate, immediate difference. It, it was just night and day. So this is the first one and just banger, just absolute banger. Same lighting, I used a little um, light panel and uh, it, it works great. I just put it in the corner of the box and uh, you'll see it's actually a, a, like a yellow or orange hue that I set it to, it's an it's a RBG light and um, the shadows that it casts through here, are just they're beautiful. So next one here, Pretty much the exact same thing, except on the other one you couldn't see there was a, a ma the mason jar was here to the side. Here you can see the mason jar, so that's pretty cool. And then the next one here, just, just I mean, come on, that thing speaks for itself. All the, the finite details of of the the cracks and the face of the watch there. Uh, and little rust spots and everything. I mean, if you zoom in here and you can just, you can feel the, the photo, you know? And like right here where it says Warren, um, you know, the cracks that weave in and out between the letters, it's just, it's beautiful. And then this one, I use the ax head a little for a little bit more of a, of a background here. And then in the foreground, you can see I laid that uh, that razor kind of at a diagonal shape to cross lines with the natural line of the wood here at the bottom of that box. And it kind of creates a little bit of an interesting foreground. And again, here on the side of the foreground, this is the, uh, the mason jar that's there. Next one here, I moved the watch all the way back to the corner. Still same concept, it's still open. Um, you still got the razor here, just nice and blown out because we're at 1.8. Um, still got the mason jar here and a little bit of the axe here. Um, this this uh, Canon that I use, I use the EOS R6, 
and the lens that I used for this was the 35 1.8 that they just released a couple of months ago and it's a macro as well and man it just it takes absolute bangers I'm, I'm so impressed with it basically the same shot here um, you can see on this one I actually ran a piece of leather down into the box through the little hole here and then into the foreground so you have some leading lines here that bring you to what we want you to see here. Lines here, here, and here, they all kind of diverge here. But love the black and white stuff. So after this one, I thought, hey, why not do some of my ring? I think that would be pretty cool. So that's what I did, I took it off. And this is what we got with the first one here. Um, absolutely am in love with the texture on this photo. We've got the wood grain here. The, the actual wood handle of the, the hatchet here just splintering off. You've got the dust right here. Absolutely gorgeous photo. Even the little grooves of the, the razor here. I mean, they're just tack sharp. I mean, I, I, I couldn't be more pleased with this photo. And it wasn't until after I edited this that I noticed the reflection of the 11 and 12 o'clock in focus here because of the depth of field but not in focus here super cool I, I didn't notice that until I was going back through these but absolutely love that and here not a whole lot's changed between this photo and this photo except I move my camera angle down and then scooted the watch over just a little bit and boom I mean it feels like a completely different photo you put a different um, preset on it here and and just i don't know like i said it speaks for itself and all of these shots i mean there you go all of these shots they're pretty much the same with just the alteration of a little bit of light change and a little bit of uh, scenery change i mean the axe is still there here i just turn the axe i close the watch feels like a completely different photo um but all the concepts are the same and then this may be my favorite one um, right here. Just absolutely demolishes the background and makes that ring just pop. Just jump out at you and scream. It looks like it came straight out of Clocks and Colors um, website. So super happy with that. And this is, this is what you can do with just a little bit of you know, time and effort, a couple of props, not a whole lot of money spent so so just set everything up in there get it how you like it arrange the scene um, I like to build a little bit of background and foreground and I think that kind of helps when you're you know you're shooting up with a with a really wide aperture like I don't know like 1.2 all my lenses are I think 1.8 I don't have a 1.2 yet plan to get one but don't have one yet um, so if you build a little bit of foreground, a little bit of background and shoot kind of like an angle and you find that sweet spot, it really makes the, whatever the item is you're trying to shoot just pop. The two things that you, you really need product photography is the layout and the lighting. So guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. It was my first time, so I hope it wasn't too awkward. <laughs> no, I feel awkward doing it, but I'm super excited about being able to get that kind of content to you guys. Leave a like and a subscription below. Go ahead and hit those buttons for me if you want to be a part of this. We'd love to have you. If you like photography, you like videography, um, film, that kind of stuff, we're, we're super stoked. we got a lot of stuff coming for you. We're excited about in the future, and um, we'd love to hear from you guys what you want to see. If you got something in mind for us, just leave it in the comments below. So how to end the video. Do like a whoosh. I'll think something. Excuse me while my house is on fire. <laughs> Good news, house is on fire. Wife's just cooking super sensitive fire alarms. Just open the door of the, the oven and that steam rises out. Everything goes off, man. So, uh, good for safety, you know.